the Argyle Highland Village area. Um, so that's north. I'm still learning my Metroplex geography. <laughs> it's northeast, maybe? That's up there. Um, and yeah, she serves um, in the online education at Southern Seminary, and she's also part of the women's Bible class teaching team at the Village Church at South Lake. Um, and so I mentioned her doctorate. She did earn her doctorate in education from Southern Seminary, which is in Louisville, Kentucky. And she has her master's in biblical counseling from Dallas Seminary. Um, and we can do a quick shout out. Caitlin Springer is starting her. Um, yeah, she's getting a degree She's getting that degree at DTS starting in a couple of weeks. So yay. Um, just wanted to say that. So yeah, like I said, Alex, so, so glad that you're here with us. Thank you, sister, for giving your time and energy. Um, and so I am going to pray and then, oh, sorry, last thing. Also, she has a wellness coaching business called Cultivate Well. Um, so sorry about that. Switch over that. And yeah, you can find her. I think your Instagram is Cultivate Well Co. Is that true? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, where she helps, um, yeah, people um, grow in health and wellness. So, girl is a uh, Jane of all trades. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to pray and then I'll um, hand it over. Father, I do thank you for um, this morning. I thank you for these women um, just from the beginning. Um, the hope uh, behind kindling was just that each life stage would be dignified and valued um, and that we would be drawn in more deeply um, regardless of life stage and um, to your presence and um, that we would receive practical tools of knowing how to walk with you um, and also that as a family we would get to have some of these more sensitive conversations and so I thank you for um, Alex and for the work that she's done years before this moment um, and that when we um, yeah really desire to see this topic be brought to light that you'd already been equipping her and so I just praise you for that and um, I do ask that this time um, would be protected and um, I pray that it would be safe um, I pray that um, yeah you would use Alex's words to encourage and to challenge and to um, yeah also to comfort and so um, we know that I know that you care for your daughters here and so I just pray that we would experience that now and um, we love you and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Antonia. Yeah. All right. Well, it's great to be with you all today. I'm Alex. And yeah, just thank you, Antonia, for that gracious introduction. Um, so today, um, like Antonia said, we're going to be talking about body image. And understanding the body from a biblical perspective is one of my favorite topics to discuss, as you could probably tell from what Antonia shared, um, especially as it pertains to the area of body image. So personally, I've walked through challenges in this area myself. And I feel like this is a topic that many people have wrestled with just at some point in their lives. We often think of this topic as being more applicable to women, but men and children can deal with um, body image issues as well, as well and just wrestle with what um, their body image uh, looks like. Um, so it's a topic that affects people throughout the lifespan. So we can think of young children to teenagers, single women to married women, aging men, aging women, um, and many more. So my hope today is to point you to Jesus and the hope that we have in him um, in the area of body image, regardless of the circumstance or season we find ourselves in today. And I only have an hour with you or less. And so we're going to take a deep dive pretty quickly. Um, the topic of body image is actually a big one. And I'll be talking about it today apart from eating disorders. So sometimes the two get lumped together. Um, but our specific talk today will be on body image and specifically looking at body image and the mind of Christ. So first, I think it's important to note that our physical body is part of our identity. And so, of course, it's not the only thing that constitutes our identity, but it is a, an important component. But as believers, sometimes we can wrestle um, with how to view the body um, because we may think like, you know, isn't our spiritual development what, what's most important? And the answer to that is yes, but according to scripture, both the soul and the body are important because we've been created by God as whole people. And this is important to think about when we're discussing the topic of body image. So today we'll discuss how to understand the physical body and the topic of body image in light of scripture 
and how having the mind of Christ relates to body image. So first, let's talk a little bit about the body in light of scripture. So we see in the Bible that our physical body is a key component, again, of who we are. We're created in the image of God as embodied beings. So our bodies enable us to be God's image bearers and representatives in the world. And through our body, we're able to image God to the world around us. So we've also been created with a soul, not just a body. We're material and immaterial, but God never separates or compartmentalizes the body from the soul. He's created us as, again, whole people. And as we think about the body, I believe it's most helpful to start by taking it back to who we are and who God says that we are in his word. And so we're going to look at how the story of scripture or creation, fall, redemption, and consummation helps us understand the body and understand the concept of body image from a biblical perspective. So let's go ahead and start back in Genesis. So according to creation, we've been created in the image of God. We are an embodied, ensouled, engendered, and in-placed people. So we are created in the Imago Dei with a body and a soul. And to be engendered means we are created as male or female. And to be in placed means that we exist within space and time, which is made possible, of course, because we're embodied, we have a body. So at the time of creation, Adam and Eve lived in perfect, perfect relationship with God, with each other, and were also rightly related to themselves. So in the Garden of Eden, they rightly understood how God created them and who he created them to be. But unfortunately, we know it doesn't stay this way for long because according to the fall, sin enters into the world. Satan tempts Eve with a lie, and she questions the good and healthy boundaries God gave to her and Adam. She eats the fruit, and of course, so does Adam. And as they do, their eyes are opened, and they become aware of their nakedness. Through these actions, again, sin comes into the world. They become self-aware, and suddenly their focus is not on God, but on themselves. And again, they are ashamed, and they seek to hide from God. So again, through the fall, sin enters in the world, into the world, and we feel the effects of this today. So including within the area of body image. And because of sin, we struggle to have a right view of ourselves and our bodies, just as Adam and Eve did because of the fall. But of course, we know the story doesn't end there. So according to redemption, Jesus enters into the world. He comes to rescue and redeem God's people through his incarnation, death, and resurrection. So in the incarnation, Jesus came to earth in a physical body. His earthly ministry was made possible because he was embodied. So we see the importance of the body and how both he regarded his body, his own body, as well as the body of bodies of others. So scripture tells us specifically some of the ways in which Jesus related to his own body. So he rested, he ate, and he drank. He took physical time away to pray and to be with his father. He expressed his emotions outwardly, and he physically interacted with others and more. We can probably think of some specific examples there. And also too, scripture shows us how he regarded the bodies of the people to which he ministered. So physical healing of the body was a significant aspect of Jesus's earthly ministry. The physical needs and limitations of the people Jesus ministered to were meant to highlight their spiritual needs, which of course could only be fulfilled in him. Jesus fully entered into their pain and suffering with the goal of providing holistic restoration. And this type of holistic restoration should give us hope as we think about the topic of body image. Jesus cares for us as whole people. He wants to enter into our brokenness, suffering, and pain. Again, he cares for us as whole people, and he cares for us and our bodies. So through Jesus, Jesus and his earthly ministry, we see how God values the body. Yet we live in a broken world and we're broken people. So we're going to experience struggles, of course, in this area. 
We live between the already and the not yet. And I think this tension really reveals itself in the area of body image in a unique way. Therefore, understanding how God has created us and who he's created us to be can give us hope as we wait for Jesus' return when he'll make, of course, all things new. So lastly, according to consummation, all of God's creation will be redeemed and made new, which of course includes us as believers. So as Philippians 3 describes, our citizenship is in heaven. And in the return of Christ, our lowly bodies will be transformed to be like his glorious body. When we see him, we will be made like him, as 1 John 3 tells us. So again, in the resurrection of Christ, we see a picture of our future resurrection. As 1 Corinthians 15 explains, Jesus has been raised from the dead, and he is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And one day we will be raised just as he has been raised and we will experience glorification of our bodies. So knowing that the day of final restoration is coming also gives us hope as we wait for Jesus's return. Not only will there be no more weeping and no more pain, um, but we'll also be free from the body image struggles um, that we have today. And so in that day, again, we will be made like Christ, and that includes our bodies, which will be transformed into glorified, imperishable, heavenly bodies in the resurrection. And I think in this area, uh, it's important to remember that we aren't waiting alone. Um, we aren't meant to tough this out in our own strength. So specifically in 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, Paul assures us of our future resurrection while simultaneously encouraging us to have hope as we wait because we have the Spirit. He explains that the Spirit has been given, us, given to us as a guarantee of this future reality of resurrection. Therefore, the Holy Spirit brings us comfort and hope as we walk by faith, including within the area of body image. So again, that's how the story of scripture can help us see um, the physical body and body image through a biblical lens. So let's look, take a little closer look um, at uh, the concept of body image. So body image specifically is uh, defined as how someone perceives their own body and the feelings that are associated with this perception. So I'd like to take a moment here for you to think about a few questions. So how do you specifically see, feel, or think about your body? How do you perceive that others see, feel, or think about your body? How you answer these two questions contributes to your body image or how you perceive your own body. The term body image is actually a neutral term, um, as you probably understand and have been able to pick up from what I've, what I've discussed so far today, but we can actually have a positive or healthy body image or a negative or unhealthy body image. Our worldview, of, of course, is gonna determine how we define um, those categories, but of course, we're coming from a Christian worldview today, so that's um, the lens through which we're looking at um, body image today, of course. So there's some general factors that most people would agree can influence our body image. And I'd like to go through a few of those factors. So I think these will all make sense as we hear them. Um, but first is age, uh, gender, mental health struggles, such as depression, anxiety, and others, body characteristics, such as body size, physical features, abilities, physical disabilities, and more. Um, teasing or bullying, trauma, personal tendencies, personality tendencies rather, such as perfectionism or individuals with more of a type A personality, um, individuals who struggle with comparison and, and more kind of in those uh, categories. And then also the actions of others can influence our body image as well. So this could include being in relationship with um, others who struggle with body image, such as being raised in a household that focused negatively on the body, maybe having close friends who are hyper-focused on appearance. Um, and again, I think there could be many more um, situations that you could put into this category. So 
while I think we can all agree that those are factors that influence our body image, as believers, I think we should recognize that there are more aspects that we could add to this list. So a few other factors that I've observed that can influence how we perceive our body um, can include. So what we think about, identifying what we dwell on, what we take in through our senses, so such as what we put before our eyes, what we long for. So what do we believe will bring true happiness and joy? Um, also underlying beliefs that we might have about the body. Also personal experiences, whether those are positive or negative. Um, also lack of, biblical, lack of a biblical understanding of the body. And lastly, um, I think even what we think can fix our body image also can influence um, how we understand and view our bodies, which is something that Antonia hit on earlier. Um, and I think of these as kind of, um, you know, absolutes that we think like, when I lose weight, then I'll be happy with my body. Or when I'm married and have affirmation from my husband, then I'll be satisfied with my body or, you know, other similar type thoughts. And so while I think the first list certainly influences how we view our bodies, again, kind of from a, a you know, worldly perspective, everyone can agree on, um, on the first list. We also see in the second list that there's several other aspects that we wanna consider. And so two significant factors um, that I've observed most often in myself and then also with the women that I've worked with um, is both the thought life, so what we're thinking, paired with what we take into our senses, so especially our eyes. And so most of us have probably heard the saying, you become what you behold. And if we're looking to what the world says about the body, how we should see, feel, and think about our bodies, then of course we're going to come up short in that area. God does not want us looking to the world to understand who we are. He wants us to look to him because he made us. He created us in his image. So again, I have a few questions that I'd love for you to think about. So the first question is just based on what we've talked about here in the last couple minutes. What are you beholding? So again, what are you beholding? Number two, what false stories are drawing you away from God's true story? And then third, what are you focused on that's taking you away from understanding who you are and who God has created you to be according to his word? And I'll go through those again. So what are you beholding? What false stories are drawing you away from God's true story? And then what are you focused on that is taking you away from understanding who you are and who God has created you to be according to his word? So when we're struggling with body image issues, our focus is inherently turned inward. This may not be intentional, but it's naturally what happens. This takes our focus away from the ability to serve others and the Lord, of course, as a result, because we're so hyper-focused on ourselves. So that's not meant to heap shame as I bring that up, but just to increase our awareness. Put simply, as I become focused on myself and my body, I cannot focus on others or the Lord as fully. It's just a fact. And again, in this area, the answer is not to completely ignore the body because that's not biblical either. <laughs> we don't want to swing the pendulum back and forth. We want to remember what scripture tells us that the body is for the Lord and the Lord is for the body. And that's what it says in 1 Corinthians 6.13. And of course, in that section, um, the context was sexual immorality, but the principles are the same. God wants us to be aware, aware that there is a good purpose in our bodies and how we think about our bodies matters. So again, God wants us to be aware that there is a good purpose in our bodies and that how we think about the body matters. So let's talk about how having the mind of Christ now relates to body image. So in his book, um, Who God Says You Are, Klein Snodgrass notes, which is quite a name, may I say, Klein Snodgrass, <laughs> but the book is fantastic. Um, so he says, if we are created in God's image, there is nowhere else to go to know who we are. 
even though God is the last place many people want to look. When we look to God, suddenly our bodies take on value. The physical, created by God and declared good, is suddenly not negative. So this is where the mind of Christ enters into our discussion. Having the mind of Christ enables us to maintain a biblical perspective on our bodies and our identity. As we rely on the Lord, we should seek to actively focus our minds on who God says that we are and what he says about our bodies. And so when we say the mind of Christ, what do we mean by that? So let's go ahead and go to 1 Corinthians 2. Um, if you have your Bibles, feel free to open. If not, um, I'm going to be reading as well, um, so you can just follow along as I read. Um, but in this section, Paul exhorts the people of Corinth to place their faith in Christ and not in the wisdom of man. He explains how salvation is only made possible by the work of the Holy Spirit and that the wisdom of God is made available to the believer by faith. So starting in 1 Corinthians 2.12, let's go ahead and read. Now we've received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely to, given to us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So as believers... Again, we have the mind of Christ, which allows us to understand the things that are of God. We do not place our faith, hope, or trust in the wisdom of men or the things of the world. We place our faith, hope, and trust in Christ, who has overcome the world. The Holy Spirit indwells believers, enabling us to have the mind of Christ and to walk in the wisdom of God. So as we discern how to understand our bodies, we want to rely on the Holy Spirit. We want to think about the things of Christ, not the things of this world. So what are we to think about as believers? There's a lot of places in scripture we could look to discuss this, but we're going to go ahead today and go to Philippians 4. Again, turn there if you'd like. If not, just listen as I read along. So in verses six and seven, we read, do not be anxious about anything, but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So these verses, familiar verses for most of us, implore us not to be anxious, but again, to put our faith, hope, and trust in the one who has created us. As we come to the Lord in thankfulness and in prayer, he promises to give us peace, which surpasses, again, all understanding. And this peace guards our hearts and our minds. Therefore, as we walk through body image struggles, we can rest in the one who has created our bodies. He is the giver of peace. Again, the body is for the Lord and the Lord is for the body. So we know that the one who created us can reorient our thinking. He's created us as embodied and sold people in his image and for his purposes. So he can handle the doubts, the insecurities, and the struggles that keep us hyper-focused on ourselves instead of trusting in him. We need to continually bring these things to him, not once, not twice, but continually, so that the lies of the world can be replaced with truth. So let's continue in verse 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So here we see that we are to set what we are to set our minds on as believers in Christ. We're to fill our, fill our minds with that which is of the Lord. So things that are true, honorable, just, 
pure, lovely, commendable, excellent, and things that are worthy of praise. We need to set our mind, minds on that which encourages us to love God and love others. As we said previously, when we're hyper-focused on ourselves and our appearance, our attention is inherently drawn away from the, these things, so from loving God and loving others. So again, instead, we're to set our minds on the things above, not on the things of earth, as Colossians 3.2 tells us. And Romans 8.6 goes on even further to say, to set the mind on the flesh or the things of this world is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. So here, Paul's not saying that to set the mind on the body is death, but rather on that which is fallen and sinful. So in regards to this verse, one commentator notes, to set the mind on the flesh means to think continually about and constantly desire the things characteristic of fallen sinful human nature. That is to think just the way the unbelieving world thinks, emphasizing what it thinks is important, pursuing what it pursues in disregard to God's will. So again, we want to think about that which is of God and comes from God in the area of body image. We need to bring our struggles to him and ask him to fill our minds with his truth. So as we seek to fill our minds with the things from above, the God of peace is with us. So not only did we see how he gives us peace in our minds and in our hearts, but he gives us himself, the God of peace. So lastly, let's look at Romans 12, 1 through 2. And again, I'll read or you can follow along um, in your own Bible. So I appeal, appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So here we see if we're, to if we're able to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, we want to be thinking biblically about our bodies. So this will require us to continually rely on the Lord and ask for the Spirit's help in transforming our minds. And again, this will not be something that happens once or twice, but continually, especially if the area of body image is a significant struggle for us in our own lives. So as we wrap up today, I just want to encourage you in a few practical steps that you can take. So we're all in different places when it comes to the topic of body image. And so as I share these steps, I'd love for you to prayerfully consider uh, where the Lord would like for you specifically to take action. So first, go to the Lord in prayer. So in all of our struggles, we want to respond by turning to Jesus. It's easy for us to dismiss uh, the issues of body image, thinking that the body's not important or that issues of body image are not important and that they don't matter to God because they may seem small, um, but they actually do. He wants us to bring everything to him, including our struggles in this area. Also pray that the Lord would intervene in your struggles and ask for him to reorient your thinking to who he says that you are and who he's created you to be. Pray that he would continually renew your mind in this area. Also pray against the enemy's schemes to rob you of the joy of knowing you've been created in the image of God and that your identity is in Christ. Pray against being influenced by worldly views of the body that are not rooted in scripture. And lastly, pray that the Lord would ultimately help you focus on the things that are from above rather than the things of the world. Ask that he would lift your gaze to help you focus on him and others. So again, first, go to the Lord in prayer. Second, go to scripture. And I'd like to go through just a few ways that you can go to scripture um, in this area, but there's certainly, certainly many more, just as there are many um, other ways that you can be praying in regards to this area as well. So first, in regards to going to scripture, as we've talked about this morning, having a biblical understanding of the body is important. 
So we can't react to issues of body image by swinging that pendulum and then just saying, I just need to stop caring about my body. It doesn't matter anyway, because that's not a biblical response either. And so the fact is your body does matter. Most importantly, it matters to God because he created you in his image. And so we need to go to scripture to discern how to understand our bodies. So again, the answer is not to dismiss the body, but to understand and embrace the body as God's good creation. We can do this by developing, again, a biblical understanding of the body and going to scripture to remind us of these truths when we're struggling. Second, rehearse the gospel to yourself often, especially when you find yourself struggling in this area. I'd encourage you to remind yourself of the promises of God found in scripture as well as how you've seen his faithfulness in your own life. And also too, I'd encourage you to remember that Jesus identifies with us in our suffering and he is the one who can redeem it. God's power is made perfect in our weakness and therefore we glorify the Lord as we rely on him in the midst of our struggles in this area. And then lastly, go to key scriptures um, that encourage you specifically in this area. If it helps you, I'd make a list of those verses or passages for quick reference for yourself. So when we're struggling, we want to be able to readily go to the areas um, of scripture that we know are going to help us combat lies and remind, uh, remind us of God's truth and help replace those lies. And so again, first, go to the Lord in prayer. Second, go to the word. And then third, go to the body of Christ. So as we think about the body of Christ, I want us all um, in here today to commit to encouraging one another in the area of body image. So we wanna, don't want to leave this session today and, and put this on the back burner because it is something that's important. Um, and so be willing to step into the struggles that your sisters in Christ are experiencing and help remind them of God's truth, pray with them, and then commit to walk alongside them in this area. On the flip side, if you know that you need help in this area, I'd encourage you to reach out to a sister in Christ and share with them how you're struggling. And especially pray for boldness if you're finding that having difficulties, uh, you're having difficulties in reaching out um, and, and expressing this to someone. It, it's important to, to bring these things to brothers and sisters in Christ because we want to make sure that we're bringing our struggles um, out into the light and so that they don't thrive in the dark. And so we want to go to someone that can encourage us, pray for us, and point us to truth. This could also involve talking to a pastor or minister at Mosaic, or even seeking counseling to help you in the area of body image, if that's something that's needed. So we're a communal people. We're not meant to endure these difficulties alone. We need one another. So if you're struggling in this area, again, I'd encourage you to rely more readily on the body of Christ in your struggles. So as we wrap up, I wanna encourage you to find freedom in the fact that this may be a lifelong struggle for you. <laughs> I know that sounds ironic, but it's the truth. <laughs> so we may you know, ex hope to experience complete freedom in this area on this side of heaven, but uh, you know, that may not happen. This may be that type of lifelong struggle that we have, but that doesn't mean that we need to just throw up our hands in response. As we know, Paul himself pleaded with the Lord to take away the thorn in his flesh, as we see in 2 Corinthians 12. But the Lord chose not to remove it. Instead, he told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, and my power is made perfect in, in weakness. And so Paul said that he would boast more gladly in his weaknesses because of, the re of that reality. And so we see how God redeemed Paul's suffering by using it to draw Paul to himself. And in turn, Paul relied more readily on the Lord um, in his suffering. And God does the same in our lives with our particular areas of struggle, including within this area of body image. God is glorified as we struggle well and point others to the hope we found in him in this area of body image, as well as in all of life. So therefore, we can go to Jesus as we struggle well, and as we go to him in prayer, we want to go to the word, 
and go to one another. So as we wrap up, I'd love to be available for questions for you all. Um, I know that this, this is a um, heavy topic sometimes for, for some people, either you've struggled with this yourself or you know others that have struggled. Um, and so I wanna hand it back over to Antonia and just see um, yeah, if there's any way I can be a help regarding questions. Yes, Alex, thank you so, so much. Gosh, so encouraging um, and so much truth, which is what I love so much about how you approach this topic is that um, yeah, you just, you uh, are so gracious to give a biblical perspective that we can actually sink our teeth into. And so thank you for being willing to, to do that um, with us and for us. And so, yeah, I do have a couple questions with the few minutes that we have left. And the first one is just, you know, uh, I loved what you said about, you know, what uh, we, about what we behold and just the importance of our eyes. And we see that, I mean, with Eve, right? Like she saw, that was the first step was seeing and then you know of course what transpired and so um just thoughts on that i mean um yeah with social media and even you know this morning i was on pinterest i mean you just name it it feels like we're just under a barrage and yet i don't know that we can completely disconnect so just any thoughts maybe in your own life or how you'd encourage us to maybe consider guarding our eyes in particular as it relates to comparison yeah, that's a great, <clears throat> a great question. And yeah, like you said, one that's a very real um, reality for most of us. I would just think about specifically what healthy boundaries look like for you. And I think that's going to be different for everyone. Um, some of us, maybe because of work or um, other requirements, we need to be on social media more. Um, and so it's going to depend on the specific person. And I think also just being... Um, being prayerful about where the Lord might want to put those good and healthy boundaries, um, I think would be helpful, um, as well as just being in tune and not being passive when you're engaging with social media. So I think so much of what we do in social media is very passive. We're scrolling, we're looking at pictures, we're reading, and before we know it, time a lot of time could pass, um, and we could not be aware of how maybe those, what we're taking in is affecting our hearts, it's affecting our minds. And so I would say just try to increase and exercise that awareness muscle of, how is what I'm taking in affecting me personally? Mm -hmm. When I'm shutting off my phone or shutting off my computer, or iPad or whatever, am I um, feeling more in tune with the Lord or if I'm, am I feeling distanced from the Lord and more focused on myself? And so I think that can be a helpful um, barometer just to kind of think about. Um, when it comes to social media, because yeah, that can be an area where it's so easy just to pick up our phones and scroll, scroll, scroll. And before we know it, I mean, gosh, what are the thoughts that we're having? Um, it can be pretty, pretty challenging. Yeah. And so again, just going to the Lord in prayer, asking him for what good and healthy boundaries look like for you, mm -hmm. considering what the requirements are in your life for the needs to potentially be on social media mm -hmm. and then looking at what is what is edifying and what's not edifying that I'm taking in yeah that's so good even just the awareness piece of just yeah staying engaged being aware of what you're consuming um, in the moment because there are times where you're like I don't even know why I'm still scrolling <laughs> like it's just because I forgot that's to scroll that moment just shut it off like yeah. if you're finding that you're passive just shut it off because again like you're, you're not aware how what you're taking in is affecting you. Internally. Yeah. yeah, that's really wise. Um, and then just the next question, and then we'll probably wrap up, have to wrap up here, um, is just, so I, I uh, you talked about, and I'm so glad you mentioned this, of just how body image issues affect the span of, you know, you give lots of different examples. And so that, I think so, that was really helpful for me just to remember like, oh, this is something that affects lots of people. Um, but for single women in particular, I feel like something that um, we talked uh, talked a little bit about this, but um, yeah, just the, I know it, it is a lie. And so I'm wondering if you can help us like with what would be a truth to replace it. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. Um, is that especially in kind of the dating-ish world, it can feel like if a lie that the enemy uses a lot is like, well, if it's because I look a certain way, you know, I need to um, work really hard to um, conform to a certain degree or level of attractiveness in order to 
be pursued or to be, you know, wanted, that kind of thing. And so can you just help us out with maybe thinking about how to combat that in ourselves and then also maybe how um, to, to care for our sisters and our friends when they're in that position and they're believing that. For sure. Yeah, I think that's great. And yeah, I think going back to, again, understanding what the Bible says about our body and just being intentional in going back to that. I mean, everything that we talked about today, mm -hmm. um, who God says that we are and who he's created us to be, the purpose for our bodies. Mm -hmm. And so I think if we can rehearse a lot of those things to ourselves in those moments, that can be really helpful. And maybe even rehearsing those things with one another, talking about these things, even being, I know it takes a, a, a large level of vulnerability, but sharing the things that you are thinking, sharing the thoughts that you have, writing those thoughts down to help increase awareness, mm -hmm. and then looking specifically for you at what aspect of a biblical understanding of the body helps you replace those lies. Yeah. But for some people too, like we talked about, like this is very pervasive and you may need to go to um, a pastor or a minister. You might need to seek counseling. And so being willing and open to do that, I think is helpful if you're finding that this is a pervasive issue. Mm -hmm. But again, um, you know, yes, we're talking about um, what body image looks like in the realm of singleness, but also it's not, it's not going to go away. And so whether we're in a relationship or we're married or, you know, we think, oh, when I get old, I won't even care about my body. You know, it's regardless of where we are on the lifespan or, oh, I wish I could be a kid and have no, you know, regard for what I look like. Like there are still children that have a body image, um, body image issues and have to work through those. And so anyway, all that to say, just the, the kind of all or nothing thinking or thinking when this, then this will happen. Mm -hmm. stopping that in its tracks and again replacing lies with truth looking back to what scripture says about the body I think it's really helpful yeah I don't know if on that note sharing some resources would be helpful yeah, that'd be great yeah I just kind of I you know you can go a couple different directions with this unfortunately there's not a lot on body image but there's a lot on that you can take from resources um to help you with that so I know we're, we're close to being out of time so this is one article that you can search for so toward a theology of human embodiment by Greg Allison it's a little a little heavy but um I think you guys would enjoy it and then another book, which you can actually get for free to download if you sign up for his newsletter on his website, is Earth and Vessels by mm. Matthew Lee Anderson. And again, you can get it for free, the free PDF on the website if you, um, if you sign up for his uh, newsletter. Um, and then I referenced this book today. This book is great. I think you guys would really enjoy it. It's a great book. Also, Reset by David Murray is really great. Um, his wife, Shauna Murray, has written a book called Refresh. Um, that's more tailored to women. Yes, I can send these titles. I'll send them to Antonia. I know I'm kind of going through them quickly. This one's a good one. And then lastly, um, it sounds like this would be about body image, but it's actually not. But it's Love Thy Body by Nancy Piercy. It's kind of, again, along the lines of human embodiment. So anyway. Sorry, it's muted. Um, yes, yeah, so good. I think, um, let me see. First, I'm going to, that is the link for the next session. So I'm just going to get that out because I had it there. But someone asked for the titles through chat and it was. Um, I can send them to you and I don't know if you want to email them out. Yeah, or... We can probably email them out if that's okay. Stephanie Lawrence, sorry about that. Um, but we can and feel free to reach out to me. I mean, if Antonia sends this out to you, like you can um, email me, you can reach out to me on social media. My website's under construction right now, like redesign. And so you can go to that, but um, I won't be able to, yeah, you won't be able to see much because it's not fully up, but it's cultivatewell.co. Um, and I, yeah, I'd love to be available. This is my joy to help women process through these topics and um, again, it's, it's going to be a lifelong thing for most of us. So just know that I'm available, available to help. Yes. Alex, so thankful for you. And, um, yeah, just to, um, her Instagram cultivate well.co is so helpful. I know I go, you have so much information on there. And so, um, it's a great resource. So thank you for curating that. Um, yeah, just as a resource as well. 
Um, sister, thank you so much. Um, this was such a gift and yeah, just so grateful, especially just for the encouragement to, uh, to be able to battle this wall for a, like consistently, but with community. And I think those two components, um, really, at least for me, take off the pressure of having to fix everything right now and just go, okay, I can ask people for help. Um, and I just get to do my best today um, and give to the Lord. And so thank you for that. So um, that's all the time we have. So sorry. Yeah. I wish we could. Oh, no. no. Yeah. No. Those other sessions. It sounds amazing what Mosaic has put together for you guys. So enjoy. Enjoy your day. Thanks, sister. Okay. We'll talk soon. Okay, friends. Um, I will. I'm going to kind of go offline here, but I, I never know how to end.